Today we're going to activate parental controls on an Apple MacBook Pro. This also works on an Apple MacBook and also an Apple Air. The first thing we're going to do, top left hand corner, is go down to System Preferences. This is the functionality that allows us to control the computer. Fourth block down, we're going to click on Parental Controls. It gives us two options here. We can create a new user account with parental controls, or if our child already has an account on this device, we can convert this account to a parental controls account. I'm going to create a new user account. So that has been selected by default. Then I'm going to press on the continue button. And it's going to ask me for my administrator password. to unlock the parental control facility. So I click unlock, and this is where I can create a new account for one of my children. So I put their name in, the display name, which is the account name, a password. This password will only allow them to get access to their account on this device. You can put a password hint if needed. I then click on continue. As we can see top left hand corner, we have created Jimmy's account. And down the bottom we have a plus and minus sign. If we have other children who are going to use this device, and they're going to have their own account, we can add extra accounts or we can delete accounts. The tabs up the top indicate what parental controls can do for us. The first one is apps. If we ticked on limit applications, it would allow us to choose what apps our kids can and can't use. Then we go to web. Website restrictions. It's already clicked on try to limit access to adult websites automatically. We can customize that where we can add websites that we never want them to visit or ones we allow them to visit. Maybe it's YouTube. So we can put it, we don't want them to visit YouTube, we can put www.youtube.com in the blacklist and they won't be able to visit it. These are people that they can connect to. It can help us limit who can connect to our children through um, their email account or through iMessage. So we can put in that list the allowed contacts. We can control who gets access to communicate to our children. The fourth tab is time limits. The top two weekday time limits and weekend time limits indicates the period of time during the day that we want our children to get access to uh, the internet or the device. Bedtime indicates the times of the day that we don't want our children, probably on the computer, maybe a bedtime and also maybe not too early in the morning. So these are very self-explanatory and we can set those to suit our family's needs. Then we're going to go to other, which are just tick boxes where we can um, determine some of the uh, information or some of the functionality that we do or don't want them to have access to. The second one from the bottom, changing the password. It means once we've set the password for our child to log into their account, they can't change it. I then clicked on bottom right hand corner logs. This is a record of the activity that's been occurring on the device. Now of course, because this is a new account, it's already selected on websites visited. There's nothing there, but it will show all the websites our children have been to. It will show the websites that have been blocked. It will show the applications they have used and attempted to access and also conversations that they've had through iMessage only. So that's a record of everything that they've been doing on the device. Again, very self-explanatory. We go down to the bottom and once we put our settings in place, it is very important to click on lock to prevent further changes. Thank you.